I mean, my whole career, I've been working with the Kundalini, and that started. Well, I was doing a bit of massage and healing, but really, I was just a stoned hippie, and. Uh, I was coming, you know, I'd done drugs from an early age and was coming to a point where I was totally schizophrenic and had to get out or die. And I was lying on my bed and I was quite, well, very stoned. And I was really paranoid. I was just lying there being really paranoid and all these terrible things were going to happen. And I just did myself, I thought it must be a way of somehow getting out of this paranoia and somehow I did I found a place in myself where it wasn't affecting me and as soon as I got there and I had no idea what it was this rush of energy came up through my spine and my whole brain just went bop and it sounded like a, a light bulb when it blows up it goes that pop and goes out and this bright light all I could see all around the inside of my brain and because I was so stoned, I thought, well, there goes another million brain cells. And then this big <laughs> rush happened again, and it's another pop. And then about two weeks after that, I was on the road hitchhiking, and I got involved on a, a bus with who were macrobiotic people, and then I got into meditation. I ended up in India. Um, but uh, I've always enjoyed and always everything I've done has been that energy going through the spine. And then about six years, and it was always this rush and pop and release, and it was always exciting. Then about five years ago, it didn't stop. It just kept going. I had a kundalini awakening. And when that happens, everything changes forever. You can never be the same again. Um, yeah. For me, it was really a terrifying experience. It was about, I, I couldn't, I still can't socialize, but it was about six to eight months before I even tried doing a session again. And I can do sessions okay. Um, but I knew at that point that I would be spending the rest of my life integrating and being with that energy. Could people say, oh, don't worry, you'll come down. <laughs> and I, I knew I wouldn't. I knew I'd opened the door that doesn't shut and in a way the whole door and room and everything disappears anyway um, and, and I didn't want to teach holographic breathing for a long time because I thought if this if that's gonna do this to people I can't take responsibility for that I can't handle it myself let alone let somebody else go through it and then as I started you don't really come down from it it just carries on getting stronger but you become used to it and then after a while you enjoy it so it's, it's like being on LSD all the time <laughs> uh, except it's real it's <laughs> the only difference um, and and as I started becoming used to it I thought well it may be hard but actually this is something that will change the human race you know you, you you wouldn't do bad things anymore you just wouldn't be capable of, of doing anything and and I started realizing well actually this won't happen to many people it will just start wherever they are in their process and if it's meant to happen in that way to someone it's going to happen anyway so I thought well okay that's great I'll go back to teaching the holographic breathing and I will incorporate that experience into it and I will help people open up through that experience so they're having little glimpses of the energy working in that way and then they can work with them it themselves for me I always loved that experience of ended up where I've ended up um, but but I do include that now in in teaching this um, yeah 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 so if, if um, and most people who come along seem to want that and seem to enjoy feeling the energies releasing through the brain, feeling the energies going home. Uh, and for me, before it does that, you just seem to be going around in a circle. You maybe get used to the karma, you maybe release. 
but this, this I guess they call it the wheel of Dharma or something it just keeps on going round when it goes through the brain and carries on going through the brain you can no longer be the person you were before and that wheel is no longer in operation the way it was before and you start processing stuff that you were never processing before and it doesn't stop and it releases home so it's 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 kind of balancing because it's you know before that we are an individual and it kind of stops here but as soon as this is going through and this opens up you're no longer an individual and you're connected to something much bigger that is also you um, and with the holographic breathing for me I once holographic breathing started it never stopped it just started and unless I'm speaking or unless I'm eating I'm doing holographic breathing it was like I'd done it in a past life and it just awoke and as I'm teaching in the, the cranial lectures I'm doing how the brain works how the cranial bones works how the cranial fluid works all the time it means that the bones of the cranium and face and spine are articulating and moving and that the energies are traveling through and I think a lot of my job is to teach how it comes through the throat how it comes through the brain because globally to me it stops here people's breath is here it's not going through here but as soon as this is all breathing it is going through there and at some point that will awaken so I think that is a lot of the teaching of holographic breathing so um, you might be getting into something you don't want to <laughs> I'm not sure um, but um, for me holographic breathing is powerful and and as powerful as you want you know a lot of people are just doing it for relaxation and sporadically that is absolutely fine but you can take this to any level you want and it is not just a, a breathing thing to relax or a breathing thing to do this or that uh, for me holographic breathing is truly a transcendent breathing system and physically and energetically interactive system that works on all levels and work spiritually as well and will connect you to the higher realms and will connect you to the earth and will teach you how the energy moves through the brain so you are no longer that you are no longer the identity you're no longer the intellect it is still there it's still working but you're not identified with it in the way you were before and as that happens you get a whole different access to a whole different area that for me had I had no idea even existed and as it moves through my, through the brain I just thought it's like having a house and suddenly you realize you've got a whole extra floor that you didn't know existed before and my images of before would be that oh it's very spiritual or it's very high energy it's not like that at all it's very grounded and it's integrated into the whole body there's a real physicalness to it as it goes through there but you start seeing your own mind you start seeing your own intellect because you are no longer it when the energy goes through on that level you are no longer that that you have always been and as I say for me that was a terrifying experience I thought something has gone terribly wrong <laughs> really terribly terribly wrong and either I'm gonna die or I'm gonna end up in a lunatic asylum and it was so painful my only thoughts were if this carries on for more than a week I'm gonna top myself because this is just too terrible to be with um, then luckily I didn't do that and the thought was well if you kill yourself it's not going to cure anything you know you're still going to have to deal with it next time or when you die it's going to be amplified so you may have ruined your whole life 
you may have ruined all the work you've already done but all you can do now is spend the rest of your life integrating and learning how to be with whatever thing has happened but within me I also knew however terrible it felt that actually it was probably a spiritual event and what kept me in that was that I could feel as I allowed the energies to go through there my spine was straightening all the bits in my spine that had been held before as it got as terrible as it felt they would release as it got more scary they would release more I would spend and I had a you know I had what everybody else thought I'd gone nutty but I had one friend and therapist I'll go with to her for sessions and she would journey with me and say yeah look this is happening I said you can feel that she said yeah and she said this is happening that and she made me let it be okay and in that situation if you know anybody who starts going through that the key to going through it is that it's okay once you can be with it and say it's okay this is actually meant to be this isn't some big terrible energetic mistake that's gone wrong that it's actually gone right and if, if you can convey that to them in any way that is a really helpful thing because as soon as you know it's right or can allow it to be right then you can start processing it then you can start being with it but you really do move into a new life when it happens on that level and you can never go back once that door opens finished because everything was there before it goes away so you you can't you couldn't go back if you wanted to <laughs> and Osho a teacher I was with Bhagwan Sri Rajneesh or Osho for a long time and, and still am you know you never really uh, I always remembered in some of his lectures that there's a point now I'm not saying I'm enlightened I don't think I'm enlightened I haven't gone beyond all these different ways people describe things I still get angry I still get upset about things I still feel anxiety and things like that but I, I, I am different to how I was before and said so when the Ajana Chakra Ohms, which I think happened, the Ajana Chakra um, but also the Crown Chakra was opening as well because the energy was going home. You think you've gone insane. And I think, and he says it takes three or four years to let that go through. And I, I think that is what happened to me because it's hard to believe you haven't gone insane when that happens. And you do process every part of the mind. You do process every part of internal insanity. Um, because suddenly you're in a, a space where you can view it. You're not, you are it before, so you can't view it. But once the energy goes through and just carries on going through, you drop back from that slightly you're no longer enamored with it you're no longer it so you continually being aware of your own intellect your own state of identity so anyway I didn't expect to go off on that but um, so I, I include that when I'm teaching the holographic breathing and, and I encourage it now because I see it as a way that one people can transform and powerfully but also at the moment I really want to help the earth and I think this does if people drop into this state or move towards this state then automatically that starts helping the earth we can be the true guardians that we're meant to be rather than people that just kind of seem to rape and pillage the earth and plunder it for everything we can get um, so so yeah 
I'll bring out the next newsletter over the next week and I'll, I'll put in the webinars for the new year. I'm going to do a free one. I did the um, the last one on the cranial fluid, which is really good. If you that, That's got, I don't know how many, about three hours of meditations because that's three different webinars put together and teaching how, well, my view of how the cranial fluid works. And also I did a lot of work and found out how the myelin sheath or the myelinating glial cells make rivers for the cranial fluid and I describe how that happens so it can spread out through the whole body uh, and in that I teach that and we're going to do some of that in the next one but I'm also going to refer back to how it's shown generally which the image of the cranial fluid which for me actually shuts down everything I've been talking about. That image closes down the possibility of the energies running through the brain and cranium. The, the actual image, well I, I don't know that it stops it, but it certainly doesn't help it. But if you view it all as one fluid, the fluid around the cranium and the fluid, sorry, around the brain and the fluid within the brain as one fluid and flowing out through the nerves, which I truly believe it does, then you get an unbroken continuum of water and dissemination of light through the whole central nervous system and out through the nerves and you get all of the fluid flowing in that direction as well and that aids the whole process of the light traveling through the brain the consciousness traveling through the brain and i spent a good two or three years just investigating that because i didn't know the geometry of the brain or the anatomy of the brain and I, I had no idea how it was going out through the nerves. I could just feel it in myself. And through going deeply into the anatomy, I thought, well, it can do that. It can travel in this way. Um, but, by, and I had to paint pictures of it all because there wasn't anything in the anatomy books that showed it that way. And I thought, you know, I want paintings where I can show it. And I didn't paint anything, but I before but I painted all of these pictures of the anatomy so I could teach it and I started making the first set of videos of that it, through 2012 that was it had, I, I it, just from the very beginning of doing holographic breathing it just worked like that and I had to drop the old image because if I felt held the old image how it's taught in the anatomy books I couldn't breathe I certainly couldn't do holographic breathing and when I allowed this new image, I could feel my whole brain detoxing. I could feel the Lyme's disease releasing and getting better. But I finished the last painting and I started doing these videos and I was just um, editing one of the videos and describing how it moves, not just through the cranial fluid, but through the neurons. And this energy just started pouring through my brain, the likes of which I've never felt in my life. And that's when it started. And I went outside and I went walking and I was breathing really hard. It'll be all right. It'll go away by the morning. And that never stopped. It just got worse and stronger and stronger. And about a week later, it was the winter solstice 2012, which is the solstice everybody said that everything's going to change on was the 12th of the, the 21st of the 12th, 2012. And I'd poo pooed it. I just said, no, the Mayans will just bring out a new calendar. It won't, it won't be the end. But for me, everything changed on that solstice. I was just sitting on the top of I, I was living in a van. I'd lost everything. I was living in a van. I still live in a van. I'd lost my money. I'd lost my health to Lyme's disease. And I sitting on top of Ivinghoe Beacon with this stream of light coming out of my head right up through the clouds and just turning into fire. Oh my God, what has happened to me? Um, but there you go, I'm still alive. 
Um, but anyway, yeah. So anybody who knows any cranial practitioners or anybody interested in that webinar, please let them know because I think giving them, a, if they've been taught how it's shown in the medical books. Now I'm not saying one is right and one is wrong, but for me one is detrimental and the other one helps. So to change the image, and we will be not just, I won't, this time I won't just be showing my image, we'll go back over and show how it's shown and I'll just by putting some basic fundamental laws of how the cranial fluid works, how anatomy works, how physiology works. That whole image, as it's shown, is for me just totally ludicrous and impossible. So we'll, we'll be going through both.